Morning and welcome to another Cyvex help video. This help video is based on our new USB data logging tools. These have been uh, requested for a long time. We've now got to the stage where we've allowed to unlock it for pretty much all of our USB uh, communication devices like the dual methanol injection, the all wheel drive controllers, the tiny dash, the Lambda CAN module, and some other amazing pieces of hardware that are coming in a few months time. So let's talk about what this does, how it works, and how you can upgrade your existing calibration to it. So currently in front of me at the moment, uh, I am using the latest SCAL software, which is the 349 as shown in the top left here. This software can actually be found on our forum. So on the main board index here, under the software section here, you've got a uh, latest releases. So it's been a little bit slow. Uh, under here, you can get the latest software here at the bottom. So download this, get the latest software. That's the first step in this process. Once you've got that, you'll see the new USB tool section at the top here, but most of it is grayed out because this version of firmware, which is on the device, does not support USB logging. So let's talk about how we update this, how we save this, update the firmware to the latest version to hopefully allow end users to be able to do this um, if it's not too much of a jump, if it is a big jump in the software version and loads of maps are tagged, then you need to speak to your dealer to assist in it. But otherwise, we want to try and allow end users and dealers, of course, to be able to do this, uh, to be able to get data because data is key. Uh, without data, you cannot accurately set up strategies, etc. So this is a really big step forward for a lot of the products that use the USB uh, communication. Now it's worth noting that if you are using one of our engine ECUs like the S6, S7s, etc., uh, they still use Ethernet, so they connect via Ethernet still, and the USB tool section is not used still. So I've got a 1.1 free calibration here. Uh, this has got all my settings, etc. Uh, I'm going to go file save and just save this as uh, say WMI 1.1 free, and that will basically I'm going to overwrite it because I've done it before this. I'm going to save it into this folder here. Uh, at the top here, calibrations 6859, which is the serial number of the device, and it's saved in that section. Once I've got that, what I can then do is basically close down SCAL because I no longer uh, need it, so I'm just go file, close, and I'm then gonna proceed to update the latest firmware. So I've downloaded the latest firmware for the device. This came from the forum, so if we go back to the board index, and then scroll down to the WMI section here, you can find the latest firmware releases on the second page of the latest stuff. And you can download the encryption file, the ENC file. And once you've got that, you can then save it onto your computer and then use our Cyvex data software, which there is a help link to that, by the way, um, here, uh, to how you download it and use it, is here. Really simple piece of software. Uh, so what you do is you basically, probably the best thing to do is remove your US, your device from the car, or you can keep it in the car if you want to, but no need to power the ignition on. The device is power up from USB. So I'm gonna plug in the USB into my device now. I've got the SCAL software not connected, so it will automatically go into bootloader mode. I'm then gonna click upload. This will take a few moments to upload the latest firmware into the device, and you can see it was uploaded uh, successfully. So I'm going to cl click OK on that, no longer need Cyvex data, and then I'm going to come back to SCAL and go device connect DC for keyboard shortcuts, or you can click on it. The first time it will say there's no devices found because it's taken it out of bootloader, and then you click rescan again, and that will then find the device. If you cannot, uh, if the US updater is not working for you or it can't find the device initially, make sure the cable you're using does support data pairs. Uh, some of the micro USB cables don't have that, so you can't then communicate with the device. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna connect to this, uh, the, the WMI, sorry, with the latest firmware, and you can see there's no calibration. So the easiest thing to do here is just go program defaults. What that does is it saves the default calibration layout into the computer in the profile section and uh, just gives you a, a default setting to come online. So what now we've got the default calibration saved, we're actually gonna close it down again, offline reopen our WMI 1.1 uh, free firmware, and then gonna go now to Cal, change software version, X4 WMI, and then here select the latest 1.15. 
So it's telling us that the following maps did not import successfully uh, and the other ones did. So what we're going to do is hit tag and that will basically show us the, the new calibrations that are present with the latest firmware. Got a whole data logging section here and a new data logging enable switch section in the calibration. So what I'm going to do is now save that as 1.15. So that is updated and saved. File close, reconnect to the device. And then file load that new 1.15 calibration that I've just made into the device so that my previous settings from my old map and now basically brought in and um, yeah, are online. So once you've done that, that will then bring it in line, connect, um, you can reconnect to the device and you'll now see the USB tools at the top are no longer grayed out and uh, we can start showing how that works. Sections under here are basically listed here. So you've got get log status, arm logging, set logging com comment, uh, enable automatic logging download, and uh, load latest data. So I'm actually just going to enable the automatic logging uh, download. Uh, that's really useful because what that basically does is after the logging has uh, finished uh, completing, you've stopped it, it will automatically download it and save it in a folder for you. So you can set the logging comment that you wish to have for this particular log here. So you can just put here test and then click OK. And then let's go over some of the maps here at the bottom before we go into the next sections of the USB tools. So remember anything that's in green is live adjustable and anything that is in blue is basically um, you need to program it to make changes. So the items in here are equal to or greater than for start or less than or equal to for stop. Um, you can see that information again if you press F1 you can view the help notes which are really powerful. So I've got these all set to zero for the time being to basically allow the logging to start straight away. And then under calibration switches, you've got a data logging overall enable switch, which I've got set to disable for the purpose of this video. But what you can do is you can set this to be enabled per calibration switch. So you can say, for example, if you're driving along and then all of a sudden you want it to start logging, um, you can flick up the switch on your cow switches and it goes to the next stage and then it will start logging. So the block speeds and items, these are the really important sections. So in here you can set for each block the speed in which you want the logging to occur. So there's 40 blocks of data and I've actually got them all set to 100 hertz at the minute. I am maxing out the capabilities of the USB logging. And the reason for that is I just want to show you that you can actually log something up to 4 kilohertz, 4,000 times a second. And you do that by setting all of the items in those blocks to be the same. So it basically means that everything that's in the first uh, item area is logged at 100 hertz, but times that by 40 means four kilohertz. You can then put in some other bits of data in here, uh, of other items that you wish to log, etc. And you don't have to have them all logged at an extremely fast rate. I mean, four kilohertz is a bit of an overkill, but it is useful if you wanna see something extremely fast. So we've added that capability because data is key in my opinion. So we've got some items in there that we want to log. Uh, we need to program that to basically make the, because we've made some changes and they're blue items. Once you've done that, uh, let's proceed to actually how you actually use the USB logging. So we're going to go to USB tools. I'm just pressing the U button for the keyboard command because the U is the highlighted one. So it's that button. And then what I'm going to do is arm the logging. So you've got the ability to manually control the arming of the logging. Um, this is quite useful maybe on the items, the hardware like Lambda Can, which doesn't have RPM, TPS or engine uh, speed inputs present on that. It's just raw data that comes in. So that way you can just manually arm it and it would start logging automatically because the maps over here for start and stop are not present. So that's useful for that. And you can manually uh, basically start it and then stop it under this section. But for my purpose and what most people want to use, the auto is the best way of doing it. So you set auto and instantly you see the USB logging at the top goes to pink. It will go different colors depending on what color your uh, color scheme is. But basically that, that means that the logging is armed, ready to go to start logging based on when the thresholds are met. So I'm just going to basically now enable this to come on. The USB tools then will go to green, which basically tells the end user it is now logging data to USB. 
Now in the future, we are gonna have the ability to be able to log two USB stick on certain pieces of hardware. And that will basically work all the time where it's logging the data to the USB. And then under the USB tool section, you'll be able to demux the logging file and download it from the USB stick, which would be really powerful. You won't actually need the SCAL software. But for the time being, we're using the SCAL software for this, and it's a great step up for allowing people to calibrate strategies, PIDs, etc., by having key uh, data. So let's go back to this now. Now I'm just gonna stop the logging by going into the data logging enable switch section, just disable this. And after 300 milliseconds, it will uh, bring up a uh, warning there to basically, oh, sorry, I'll just stop timeout. It will basically say it's stopped and will automatically go back to being ready to arm again. Now, I was a bit hasty. I actually pressed the ex escape button at the exact same time that the, um, the message warning popped up. So I'm just gonna show that again. So if we start the logging and then I'm just gonna stop it, you'll see the window pops up here that basically says that we've automatically downloaded the data for you and saved it in this folder. Uh, it's based on the device hardware, the date and the time. And the reason it did that automatically is because I had in the USB tool section, the enable automatic logging option. Once you've got that, you can then just go load latest data. So what that would do, the latest data that was downloaded, it would automatically open that up in SVU, which is our analytical software and allow you to then monitor everything you need um, with math channels, layouts, worksheets, reports, really powerful piece of software. So yeah, hopefully this video has been useful, allow you to now use the USB logging. It's extremely powerful. We'll be really excited about getting this done. And if you've got any feedback or anything about it or anything you'd like to see more, please just let us know at support at Cybex.